indeed, I'm, I'm going to uh, solve all the problems that were raised on the last panel, and I will uh, give us a fix, that one fix, the one policy change we need to make uh, to solve all of this. Um, so I'm, I'm talking about uh, the title of uh, this section is uh, Visions uh, of an Alternative Internet, and uh, I like that uh, the word vision is, is plural. I'm going to give you not just one alternate vision of an internet, but many uh, in 15 minutes. And uh, I, I guess I, I was going to talk about it in terms of my story, uh, Johnny Apple Drone versus the FAA. And I apologize if anyone from the FAA is here. I didn't mean it. Um, and I guess the first question to ask is, you know, why would we want an alter alternative to the internet? What's wrong with the present day internet? Uh, too slow, yeah, we want it to be a little bit faster. Uh, so we need to lay more fiber. Uh, and then, you know, what would the characteristics of a better internet be? Um, and I, you know, I guess maybe the way to approach this is in terms of the previous conversation about the value of negative hieroglyphs and uh, the relation between uh, the, our negative imaginations, our fears for the future, and our positive hopes for the future. So really, you know, even though I, I was very excited about this anthology and the premise of the anthology, I couldn't help but also include a kind of secret dystopian vision of a bad internet, where the internet might be going, how it might go wrong, uh, how trends that are happening now might uh, take us in a direction we don't want to go. Um, and you know, so, so the premise of the story is that uh, the internet has, uh, over time, uh, become in some ways uh, less open uh, less private, less desirable in, in all sorts of ways. Uh, and, you know, part of, the, part of the reason that it becomes less desirable has to do with everything that the previous panel was talking about. Uh, the Internet is surveilled by corporations, by government agencies. But that, for me, wasn't really uh, the core uh, problem. The, the, the problem had more to do with a concept I got from uh, a book by a, a law professor Jonathan Zittrain, who wrote a really good book called The Future of the Internet and How to Stop It. And his complaint in that book, his worry, is, isn't about surveillance. Uh, it's more about uh, the kind of the generativity, what he calls the generativity of our devices. So uh, it used to, at some point, be taken for granted that uh, you owned and controlled your own devices. You had some say, uh, for instance, of, over, you know, how you use platforms if you ran you know, your own website on your own server, um, if you, say, own your own uh, phone. Uh, and his worry is that uh, our devices are increasingly uh, moving into the model of the walled garden. So something like America Online is the future for all of us. And we you know, are moving toward that future um, through devices like the iPhone. So you know, if you want to download an app, on the iPhone, uh, you uh, have to go through Apple's App Store. And you can, you can break your phone. You can, you can jailbreak it. You can uh, use it in uh, unsanctioned, unofficial ways. But most people don't. They don't bother to do it. They wouldn't know how to do it, uh, even if they wanted to. And so in a way, all this discussion about surveillance is, is a little bit, you know, it's extremely important, but it's also a, a bit of a red herring. So the new iPhone 6, the new iOS, uh, automatically uh, encrypts uh, your phone. So the NSA is very upset about this. There was, there was a recent New York Times article, uh, and uh, James uh, B. Comey, the director of the FBI, was very upset that these devices might allow people, in his words, to hold themselves beyond the law. He said he would feel very sad if he had to look into the eyes of the parents of a child who had been kidnapped and tell them that the only way to find their child was on this encrypted iPhone. And you know, this, this was sort of the scenario that he was uh, spinning, and uh, you know, we might view that as a kind of plausible scenario. We might uh, decide that it's uh, not a plausible scenario. But I wanted to sort of think about you know, what a totally filtered internet might look like. And so in my story, I describe it uh, using the term uh, the media sphere. The internet becomes something where your devices are filtered, uh, the servers are filtered, uh, encryption is in various ways illegal. And this becomes the negative hieroglyph of the story. So, you know, if you're living in this world, if you're living in a world of total surveillance, uh, total filtration, 
where government and the state uh, and large corporations have uh, control over what you can do with these devices, uh, how would you know, different activist communities respond to this? And uh, you know, the alternative in the story uh, is uh, a decentralized uh, mesh network of drones that this community d develops, and they're called the Drone Punk Community, and Johnny Apple Drone, as you can imagine, is a figure in that story for uh, you know, promulgating these ideas and spreading these ideas. Um, and you know, the notion is that you can build your own internet from scratch. You can, in some way, uh, bypass uh, the internet backbone. You can, in some way, bypass ISPs. Uh, and that last mile, which is such an important uh, question for uh, policymakers today. And you know, this is this is the sort of the second, the positive hieroglyph of the story. And there, there's a you know community of drone punks. They form something called uh, the the drone punk the drone punk congress, which is you know concerned with governance questions of you know how this network should be organized, what protocols should govern it. And that's you know the story. You know, I I, I wanted it. You know ultimately to be a story, right? I cared uh, most of all about you know, telling a story about characters, and, and these ideas kind of get slipped in along the way. Uh, but the sort of the fight over uh, the different possible futures for the internet becomes the subject matter for the story, and it becomes the central driving conflict that are sort of moving, moving the characters. And so the title, uh, Johnny Appledrone versus the FAA, uh, is a description of that fundamental conflict between two alternate possible futures for the internet. Um, and I guess, you know, so that's, that's the description of what it is. And I can, I can talk about that more if you're interested. Uh, but I guess an important point for me was to resist the idea that our hieroglyphs are uh, technologies or scientific developments. Uh, I'm, you know, a great fan of science fiction. I uh, love uh, stories about gadgets, systems, uh, you know, moonshot ideas. Uh, but for me, the, the really important thing, and the thing that maybe can transition into the next panel, is the idea that the hieroglyph of this story is not technological, but political. So the thing that we really need to think about, and the thing that uh, a conference like this can do, is to help us think more about the relationship between uh, technology and policy, and think about what kinds of futures we want to build, and and what architectures uh, of governance we want to build. And this is where I think Carl Schroeder's story is one of the sort of most uh, prescient in, in, in the anthology. You know, he makes the point that you know, what we're dealing with, you know, when we think of the big ticket problems that are facing the world right now, are not problems of scarcity or imagination. They're, they're problems of governance. So if you don't like uh, global warming, if you don't like global climate change, and you want to do something about it, uh, First of all, you have to think politically. You have to think what kind of organization uh, can do the job of coordinating the actions of different states, different corporations, what kinds of regulations are needed in order to produce this hypothetical better future that we want. And you know, it would be great if you know, Elon Musk could come and save us and, and do this for us. But uh, you know, there are sort of fundamental issues of governance. You know, what is an equitable? Uh, form of climate justice. Like, how, how do we solve that problem? And I don't think it's a problem uh, of coming up with a, you know, a really nifty geoengineering solution, although, you know, we may need to, you know, engineer the climate in some way, and this might be something that we choose to do collectively. But, you know, this, this is sort of fundamentally what I think um, we need to be talking about, and what I think science fiction writers are uniquely positioned to think about. Uh, so, you know, that's... I guess uh, you know that's the sort of core of what, what I wanted to say, and I can take questions or we can move on to the next panel. Yeah, one, or one or two questions, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kevin. In, in your story, oh, okay. uh, Johnny Apple Drone is assassinated. Right. And I don't want to give the plot away, but uh, I, I'm really curious. It, ha that, it happens yeah. in the first line. Yeah. 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 So, so um, my question to you is, uh, you, left, you were ambivalent in your story about who really did the assassination, but it seemed pretty clear it was politically motivated and the FAA was the obvious candidate. Yeah. This was a positive hieroglyph? 
Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I guess my, my wife, who's in the audience, didn't feel like it was a positive hieroglyph when she read it. Uh, I, th I, you know, didn't want to write a story that uh, ignored uh, the substantive problems that we face. You know, I mean, this isn't a utopia by any means. Uh, what was positive about the hieroglyph for me was the notion that there might be a community, a political community, that might, despite substantive political differences, uh, work together, uh, overcome internal obstacles, and and the you know the story ends. I won't say how it ends, but it ends in a way that is meant to suggest that uh, something like a drone commons in the story is is it ultimately a tactic. It's a way of overcoming specific local problems, but it isn't adequate. Uh, the state is very powerful, and you can't dispense with uh, the role of governance. You you can't get rid of the state. You know I'm not a and political anarchist, you know. So uh, the question isn't, you know, will we have a state? It's what kind of state are we going to have? And this is, you know, why I apologize to the FAA, because I think there is a role for an organization like the FAA. Uh, in the hypothetical world of the story, it gets militarized, and it, it becomes a very uh, dark version of it. But uh, so I, I, do, I do try to end on a kind of positive note, but it isn't about an individual, you know, like people are... You know, I don't know. I don't want to see people who are expendable because I don't, you know, mean that in that sense. But you know, any one individual isn't going to, you know, make the difference. Yeah. Loved the story. Thank you. Loved the story. Um, focuses on two major technologies: drones and mesh networking. Mm -hmm. Mesh networking is now actually been in the news quite a bit this week with the adoption by Hong Kong protesters of FireChat, which is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, chat app that works via Bluetooth and just direct connection via Wi-Fi. Has that made you reassess, rethink, reinforce your thinking about what you wrote in the story? What, what have you been thinking about FireChat, if anything? I, I mean, I think it's... Uh, it's very similar to what's in the story. I, I'll say that. It's uh, a tactic that protesters are using in a specific situation to bypass uh, government control of the internet, you know, the Chinese control of the internet. And of course, there's a sort of the other side of it, which is these probably Chinese sponsored like phishing scams, where like certain apps are also uh, being disseminated among protesters and collecting their data. So both, both things are happening at the same time. Um, and often you think you're doing one thing. You're, uh, you know, you, you you think you're downloading the app that'll allow you to form your mesh network, but really you're you're downloading the app that the government wants you to have in order for them to collect your data. So I guess it it highlights, you know, it's not the same app in that case, but you know, it highlights the way that uh, these, de you know, these devices and these networks can be corrupted. They can be taken over. They can, you know, I mean, the FBI has a long history of sending. Uh, undercover agents, you know, to monitor protest groups and, you know, not interfering with their activities, in fact, but, you know, just collecting data uh, and often, you know, acting in unsavory ways. Okay, thank you.